Hello, this is Mr. Wynn, and today's video is about solving absolute value equations. First, make sure you know that the absolute value of a number is its distance from zero on the number line. So consider the absolute value of x is four. So what I'm saying is I'm at a spot on the number line where I'm four spots away from zero. Notice you have negative four, which is four spots away, and positive four, which is four spots away. That just means there's two cases, a positive case and a negative case. So make sure you know that. So remember for absolute value, there's always two cases, the positive case and the negative case. All right, you then solve each case separately and then make sure you check, check, check your answer and I'll show you that later. Um, it also says for any real number A, absolute value A is positive, for A positive and negative A for A negative. Again, that just means there's two cases. So our first example is absolute value of X plus 10 equals 13. I see the absolute value signs. That means two cases. I'm going to call it case one and case two. Case one will be my positive case. Case two will be my negative case. So to turn it the positive case, you just turn the absolute value to parentheses because many people don't know how to work with absolute value. The negative case is the same thing, but in front of that parentheses is now a negative sign. If there's a number in front of the parentheses, that's fine. You just leave it there or you turn it negative if it's the negative case. And you solve each one just regular algebra. The first one, parentheses don't matter, so I just get x by itself, subtract 10. x equals 3. There's my first answer. The second one, there's a negative 1 out there. Make sure you distribute this. Negative x minus 10 equals 13. Regular algebra, add 10 to both sides. Negative x equals 23. And then you divide. So x equals negative 23. There are my two answers, but I must check them. So I plug them into the original. If I put a 3 here, 3 plus 10 is 13. The absolute value 13 is just the positive number 13. 13 equals 13. That's good. This answer works. Over here, if I plug that into x, I have a negative 23 up here plus 10. Negative 23 plus 10 is negative 13. But it's an absolute value sign. That takes away the negative. There is one. So that really is 13 equals 13, which again is good. This problem has two answers. There's always going to be two numbers. We need to check them. Either both of them work, one of them works, or neither of them works. So let's try another one. Same idea. I see absolute value, two cases. I'll just say C1, case 1, and case 2. So the first case is positive. So I just turn the absolute value sign to parentheses. Second case is negative. I put a negative in front of that parentheses, or now in front of the negative 2. And it's just basic algebra. So I just work through it, distribute. Combine like terms. letter to one side. Letter by itself. All right, there's my first solution. I'll check after I just saw the other side. Uh, you can check now if you want. So work it out, distribute again. Combine like terms. Move x to one side. Get x by itself. And divide.
All right, there are my two answers. Now let's check. If I put a 3 in here for all the x's, and I'm going to do this visually. You can check in the calculator. Inside the absolute value is 3 plus 1, which is 4. Absolute value 4 is still 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 3 is 5. The left side is 5. On the right side, 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 4. 9 minus 4 is also 5. 5 equals 5. That's good. That answer works. When I try this, and this is a fraction, so bear with me. I try 1 third here. 1 third here. And 1 third here. 1 third plus 1 is 1 1 third, or 4 thirds. 4 thirds times 2 is 8 thirds. 8 thirds minus 1 third is 7 thirds. My left side is 7 over 3. On the right side, 3 times a third is 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 7 over 3 and negative 3 are not the same things. That's wrong. This answer fails. We call that an extra or extraneous solution. It does not work for our problem. So that's why you must check. This next one, same idea. We just solve it. Two cases. So C1, C2. So positive case, negative case. Do your algebra, distribute if you have to. This one has nothing, just come like terms. This turns a 3x plus 6 equals 1. Subtract 6. Uh, there's a lot of fractions today, and that's fine. And then divide. There's my first answer. Next. Other side, let's distribute. This is a negative 1. Make sure you distribute that. Negative 3x plus 2 plus 8 equals 1. Combine terms. Negative 3x plus 10 equals 1. Subtract 10. Negative 3x equals negative 9. Divide by negative 3. Divide negative 3. x equals positive 3. All right, to my two answers, I got to check both. Now, I'm kind of, not cheat this one, but think about this logically. If I plug x, this negative 5, 3, inside right here, no matter what that is, I mean, 3 times negative 5 over 3 is negative 5, minus 2 is negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7, plus 8 makes 15. My left side is 15. My right side is 1. 15 is not the same as 1. That's false. So this answer fails. And if you really think about it, any number inside the absolute value will always be positive. So I have a positive number plus 8 makes a number bigger than 8. And that's no way going to be equal to 1. Same thing over here. We have x is 3. If I put 3 here, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. Absolute value 7 is still 7. 7 plus 8 is 15. Again, 15 does not equal 1. That's false. So here I have no solution. For no solution, all you do is just put a circle put a slash through it, just like that. Or you can say no solution, your choice. All right, what I've done is when we're solving for a letter, solving for x or whatever letter they want, sometimes they ask you to evaluate something when you know the letter. That does not mean two cases. That means just plug it in and figure it out. So here, I plug in k. So 2 times negative 10 plus 5. It's like PEMDAS, um, absolute value times is basically parentheses, so fix the inside. So 5 plus 2 times negative 10 is negative 20 plus 5. I'm going to scoot over here. All right, I still have to fix the inside. So negative 20 plus 5 is negative 15. The absolute value of negative 15 is positive 15, so 5 plus 15. Combine like terms, add those two together, you get 20. Uh, there's no two cases there. They give you the letter, you plug it in. All right, the last part you may need to know is be able to create an absolute value equation from a word problem. If you have that, just follow this formula. The absolute value of x minus the average equals the range. 
So in this problem it says most tennis rackets have a 110 inch head. That's the top of the tennis racket. That's the average right there. That's my A. All right, plus or minus 25. That's my range. So write and solve this. Ah, we'll just write it. Solving is just like we did before. Examples one, two, three. So my answer here is my equation is absolute value of x minus the average minus 110 plus parenthesis uh, absolute value equals my range. And that's it. We can solve that two cases, which you should know how to do by now. All right, I'll end you with this practice problem. Solve that. Make sure you check your answers. I'm going to tell you now only one works, not both. The answer should be six. Uh, if you get that, you should be good for the quiz. Again, this is Mr. Wynn. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in class.